Hi, I'm Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful, and I came out here in our beautiful snowy San Juan mountains today. I had to even put my snowshoes on to get out here. The snow is deep uh, because I wanted to show you this wrap I just finished in two skeins of Colorama, Karen Colorama Halo yarn. This is the tin and tan colorway, and the pattern is called the Pretty Peaceful Pashmina. So it's a wrap. I'll turn around and see if I can show you the whole thing here. Really pretty, it's like a cloud. <laughs> so soft and comfortable. Um, so I used two skeins of Karen Colorama Halo yarn and my 12 millimeter hook here, which is a pretty big hook, uh, but the stitch here is mini corner to corner. So we kind of need a big hook to get that kind of definition. You can see, my dog Rosie back there, don't worry, it's not a wild animal. <laughs> uh, she's, she's got my back. So we need two skeins um, of Karen Colorama Halo yarn that is about 962 yards or 880 meters. Um, and the finished size of this wrap is about 24 inches wide and 74 inches long, which is about 61 by eight, 188 centimeters. So this is called the Pretty Peaceful Pashmina. And I want to talk about the word Pashmina for a minute because it has a couple different meanings. The original meaning is referring to the goat, um, that Pashmina fiber, gross Pashmina fiber. So there's a kind of goat species native to Northern India, like Kashmir Valley. And that one goat species produces both Pashmina fiber and Kashmir fiber. It's kind of wool. And the only difference is the pashmina is um, a little bit finer uh, of the fiber from that goat. And cashmere is a little bit coarser, although obviously it's still very luxury. So, uh, and then the word pashmina can also mean a wrap or a shawl made from that wool, or in the kind of common language today, it's just the name for a wrap or a shawl. So I don't, um, I have the utmost respect for shepherders and herders, goat herders. I don't mean to uh, try to take that word pashmina from you, um, but I just want to mention that this is not made of cashmere or pashmina wool, which I'd love to crochet with that. <laughs> that would be glorious, right? But not in my budget. So this is the pretty peaceful version. It is cruelty-free, non-animal fibers here, using Caron Colorama Halo yarn, which is a bulky weight yarn. It is 71% acrylic, 18% nylon, and 11% polyester. So this is not a real pashmina in the traditional sense of the word, meaning it uses pashmina fiber. This is the pretty peaceful version. <laughs> it's an affordable and uh, vegan version, uh, cruelty-free fibers here. So the construction of this wrap is made of two rectangles. Here's one rectangle, and the stitch is mini corner to corner. Uh, which uses blocks of a chain two and two half double crochet stitches. And I have a tutorial to show you how to start this stitch, how to make this rectangle, and then how to join the rectangles together. Here's the rec second rectangle. So this was one skein of Karen Colorama Halo, and this was one skein of Car Colin Karen Colorama Halo. And then I joined them with a seam right down the middle, and let me see if I can even find the seam. The seam is mattress stitched to join them, and it really does just disappear if you um, use the kind of matching color yarn here. So I ended on the pink, I joined the two pink ends together, and sewed them together. And the, the video that uh, comes after this will show you how to do that. So very fluffy, soft cloud, so comfy. Um, and here's how I usually like to wear this. I wear pashminas a lot, wraps a lot, and my last one was getting kind of embarrassingly ratty. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't crochet, it was a woven one, but um, I didn't even want to wear it to yoga anymore. So I'm making myself a few more. I'm going to wear this one to yoga tonight. I'm excited. Uh, because then at the end of yoga class, when you have Shavasana, your final resting meditation, I take this off and put it on like a blanket uh, just over the top of me. And, you know, it's not super wide, but it's comfy enough to keep me warm in Shavasana because you really cool down after doing that yoga <laughs> once you start laying still. But how I wear it at home, just like when I'm watching TV or typing on the computer, is I, I put it on my back and I make one end longer. I take that short end, throw it over my shoulder like that, and then just throw the other one over 
and then you know kind of adjust as you as needed and oh, <laughs> I got a snow shower here uh, this works pretty well for me it tends to stay on and this is kind of the size I like my wraps or my pashminas to really stay on um, and not kind of fall off there's nothing worse than a tiny shawl that just can't stay put so this is a nice oversized one if you wanted to make a really oversized one you could even add a third rectangle if you want um, and I am just about finished with the baby blanket version of this pattern. Um, and I might call that one the baby pashmina blanket, but <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Um, and that one uses the same two rectangles, but a slightly smaller hook, 10 millimeter hook instead of 12 millimeter. And then we're gonna join the rectangles the other way, joining the long ends of the rectangle instead of the short ends. So <laughs> stay tuned for the tutorial if you wanna make this. Get yourself two skeins of that Karen Colorama Halo and stay warm. I know I will. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to create these two rectangles for the Pretty Peaceful Pashmina um, in mini C2C stitch. I'm using Karen Colorama Halo yarn. This is uh, the tint and tan colorway. And I'm using a 12 millimeter hook. If you uh, have particularly loose tension as a crocheter, you could go down to a 12 millimeter hook. Or if you have very tight crochet tension, you can go up to a 15. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit here and show you what the stitch looks like on this mini corner to corner stitch. Um, you can see that it's made of these little blocks. Each one of these is a block here and they're each composed of a chain two and two half double crochet stitches. So I started over here at this gray corner and we're gonna work back and forth in diagonal rows. Um, and the overall size of this rectangle here is 30 uh, blocks wide on the short end here and 36 blocks long. So this end, the short end of the wrap is 30 C2C blocks this way. And then the rectangle is 36 blocks long this way. So there are kind of three types of rows we're gonna do. Increase row, that's how we're gonna get started here. And then a kind of keep it steady row, <laughs> only work the middle of the rectangle. And then a decrease row. So I'm actually gonna, normally I pull from the center of the skein here, but I'm actually gonna pull from the outside just cause I wanna start with the gray on this one. So to get started, we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook, or whatever way you like to do a slip knot, and then we chain four. Whenever we're gonna create um, a new block at the edge of the blanket here, we're gonna chain four. So there are four chains. Now we're gonna half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, and then half double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So a half double crochet in US terms, we yarn over, insert the hook into that third chain from the hook, yarn over and pull through the stitch, and now we have three loops on the hook. Now we yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then we work another half double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. So this is what one block looks like here. We have the starting chain two right here that's those first two chains that we skipped so we chained four we skipped these first two chains and then half double crochet into the third and fourth chains and this chain two space this is where we're going to join the subsequent blocks so we're going to make another block right here for, to start row two and then we're going to join it to this first block by inserting the hook into this space that's between the chain two and the other two half double crochet stitches here. So we're going to turn our work and chain four again to create a new block. This is starting row two. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to half double crochet into the third chain from the hook and half double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So there's our first one. And there's our second one. So each of these blocks is basically like three half double crochet stitches, but that first, you know, two chains here that we skipped, that counts as the first half double crochet stitch. So now this is kind of the clutch move of corner to corner crochet. If you have ever done C2C, this is like what I couldn't figure out when I first tried. 
um, to do this. And this is how we're gonna get these two blocks to stick together. We have two blocks, you know, one's kind of going up and down and one's kind of going sideways. And we have to join them. So you wanna look for this space between on your first block that you made between the chain two and the other two stitches. So if you put your work down and you put, if you're right-handed, you put your yarn tail kind of off to the left here, it's that kind of top space. So insert your hook into that space and we're gonna just slip stitch here to join. So when we're joining adjacent blocks, we're just gonna slip stitch them together. So now we have two blocks, one, two, and we're gonna create one more block right here on top of the, the block we made in row one. So to create this block, we're gonna chain two and then we're gonna work two half double crochets into the same space here. So that is row two, and we have three cute little blocks here. One, two, three. We're gonna turn our work and start row three. So to start row three, we're gonna chain four. This is how all of our rows are gonna start up till Row 31 is the first row that's gonna chain, change. We're gonna half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, half double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So now we made a block here and we're gonna join it to the next one by slip stitching it to this chain two space from our previous row, so we slip stitch. And now we're gonna create a block here and a block here to finish row three. So to create those blocks, we're gonna chain two, half double crochet twice into that chain space. I forgot to mention you can find the written pattern for this on Ravelry. It's a free download, the pretty peaceful pashmina on Ravelry if you prefer to follow written pattern. So now we're gonna repeat that again, which is slip stitch to the next block chain two, and then work two half double crochets into that same chain two space. So that's the end of row three there. And row three has three blocks. Row four is gonna have four blocks. Row five will have five blocks. So you can count what row you're on by counting these little blocks here, or you can count along the side, or you can count along that side. They're all gonna have three. So now we'll chain, uh, turn our work and chain four to start row four, half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, half double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. This is what's called an increase row in corner to corner where we're adding a new block at the start, slip stitch over to the next block, chain two, and then work two half double crochets into that same space. And repeat again, slip stitch to the next one, chain two, work two half double crochets into that same chain space. Slip stitch to this next block here, chain two, two half double crochets into the next space. So that was row four, and you can see we have four blocks counting along the diagonal and four blocks counting along either side. And they kind of alternate whether the stitches are up and down, or up and down this way, up and down this way. So they kind of make that really beautiful fluffy texture. So let's turn our work and start row five. And row five to 30, they're all gonna be the same, the same kind of increase stitch here. You start with a chain four, half double crochet into the third chain from the hook, half double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And then slip stitch to the next block over here. So we're gonna slip stitch into this space And then for each of these spaces here to create the block here, 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 and here, we're gonna do the same thing, which is chain two, and then two half double crochets into that same chain space here. So 
So we're going to keep going in this manner where you start each row with a chain four. Um, create that block by half double crocheting into the third chain from the hook and the fourth chain from the hook. Slip stitch over to the closest block from the previous row there. And then chain two and two half double crochets to create each of these blocks here. And slip stitch over to get to the next block and then create your last block on the top by chaining two and two half double crochets into that same chain space. So that was row five and we can see we have one, two, three, four, five blocks here. So keep repeating this row um, until we get up to 30 and you can finish row 30 and I'll meet you back here to show you how to start row 31 because it's a little bit different. Okay, I've just finished row 30 of these increase rows here. And you can count just by counting these blocks here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, up and make sure you have 30. So this is as wide as our rectangle is going to get on the short side. And this side is going to keep growing longer down here for six more rows. Um, and then at row 36, we're going to decrease and make that other corner of the rectangle there. So the next six rows we're going to work, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36, those are kind of the keep it steady rows where we're going to keep, keep uh, the number of blocks going um, along this diagonal steady. And we're just going to grow the, the rectangle in this direction for a little bit before we start decreasing. So the way you start rows 31, 33, and 35 is a little bit different than what we've been doing. We're not going to chain four to start our row here. Instead, we're not going to create a new block here because this is as wide as this is going to get. We're going to start by creating a block here and then continue on as usual. So we need to get our yarn and our hook over here into this chain space so we can start making blocks over here. So what we're going to do is slip stitch into the two half double crochet stitches here and then slip stitch into that chain two stitch. So we're going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet slip stitch into the second half double crochet and then slip stitch into that chain two space. So now we've created a little corner that's going to be our corner of our rectangle so that along this edge we are just going to keep this steady at 30 blocks here. So if you want to you can put a stitch marker or a safety pin in there. I don't I don't usually but if it's your first time doing uh, corner to corner and you want to keep track of that corner, <laughs> you can mark it. So now for the whole rest of row 31 and row 33 and row 35, we're going to do the same thing that we have been doing to build blocks here. Chain two and then work two half double crochets into the same chain two space. And then slip stitch to the next block over here. To that chain two space there. We're going to repeat that building blocks all along the row. Chain two, two half double crochets into the same space. Slip stitch to the next one. And we're going to keep going like that for row 31 all the way till we get to the end. And we're going to, just, just as we have been in the previous rows, we're going to create a block right at the top so that this edge of the blanket can keep growing. So I'll keep working on row 31 here and then I'll show you what it looks like at the very end of the row. And this is how you're going to work rows 31, 33, and 35. And then I'll, we'll turn our work and I'll show you how to do rows 32, 34, and 36. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row 31 and the row ends just like all the other rows have so far. We're going to create this last block here and then create one last block on top of this one. Because here we're at the long end of the rectangle and this edge is going to keep growing until we get up to 36. 
So now after row 31, this long edge of the rectangle has 31 blocks, and the short edge of the rectangle is going to have 30, and we created that corner. So now let's turn our work and start row 32. And rows 32, 34, and 36 are the same. So here we're looking at the long edge of the rectangle. So we still want this to grow. So unlike starting row 31, uh, we're going to create a new block on the end here uh, by chaining four. Half double crochet into the third chain from the stitch, half double crochet into the fourth chain from the stitch. Slip stitch to the next block. So now the long edge of our blanket is 32 blocks long. And we're going to continue as we have been, creating new blocks on top of each of these with a chain two and two half double crochets into that chain two space. Slip stitch to the next one and repeat chain two. Two half double crochets, slip stitch to the next one. So repeat that all the way through row 32 here for the rest of it, but when we get to the top, we're going to create a block here, and that's going to be our last block of row 32. We're not going to stick up over this edge anymore because this is going to be our straight edge. So I'll meet you back here when I get up to the end of row 32, and we'll turn our work in. Um, row 33 will start just like row 31 did. Coming to the last few blocks of row 32. And here's our last block of row 32. It's going to chain two and two half double crochets as usual. And we're going to slip stitch to this block here. And now you can see that this edge emerging, this is the kind of second long edge of our rectangle. This one's going to have 32 blocks across on this long edge. This one is just getting started, so we only have three blocks over here so far. Now we're going to turn our work and start row 33, and it's the same as row 31. So we are going to slip stitch into these two half double crochet stitches here and then slip stitch into this chain two space <clears throat> to help maintain that nice straight edge we're going for and get us ready to crochet in the rest of row 33 here so I'm going to repeat row 31 and just make a block by chaining two and two HDCs all across row 33 here and even make one on top at the end of row 33 here because this is the edge that is still growing. So I'll keep going on row 33 here and then we'll turn our work and start row 34 and row 34 is a repeat of row 32. It starts with a chain four, and row 34 will be working back in this direction here. So on row 34, we'll stop. The last block will be right there on top of the first block of this row. And then row 35 will be a repeat of row 31 and row 33, just like this. We're going to slip stitch over to get started. And then row 36 is a repeat of row 32. You start with a chain four to keep that side growing and then crochet back down to this straight edge here and i'll show you what to do after you get past row 36. all the rest of the rows are going to be decrease rows starting with row 37. so i'll crochet to get to that point and show you what to do okay i just finished row 36 here it's kind of hard to see because it doesn't all fit on my table nicely. But uh, along this bottom edge, I have 36 blocks, if you count like that. And along this short edge, there are 30 blocks. And right here at the top, you can see 
the last few rows we made, that little baby edge up there that's going to become the other long edge of the blanket. And now row 37 is the point where this corner is going to turn into a straight line also. So row 37 and the whole, all the rest of the rows are decrease rows. We're going to keep getting smaller until smaller, smaller number of blocks per row until we just have one block left and you can fasten off. So all the rows from now on are going to start the same. We're not going to chain four anymore ever. Every row is going to slip stitch over to that chain two space. So we're going to slip stitch in the first half double crochet stitch, slip stitch in the second half double crochet stitch, and then slip stitch into the chain two space. So we're starting row 37. Oh, I think I messed up here. I'm gonna go back here. So we're starting row 37 and we are going to start this way for all the rest of the rows now. Okay, and now we are back in our spot where we can start building blocks to put all the way over here. So we're going to do that, chain two, two half double crochet stitches into that same space. Slip stitch to the next one, chain two, two half double crochets, slip stitch over. This is how all our rows are going to go on, go from now on. We're going to slip stitch over to create a block there, maintaining that edge straight. And then at the end of the row, of row 37, we're going to create a block here, create a block here, and then we're going to stop. We're not going to create a block on top at the end. Um, we're not going to create a block on top of the first block from our previous row because that would extend the long edge of the rectangle out to 37 blocks, and we don't want to keep growing and growing. We want to stop now. So I'm going to keep crocheting up here, and at the end of row 37, we'll create our block here chain by chain two, two half double crochets. We'll slip stitch over here, and then we'll just turn our work without creating one over there. And that's how all the rest of the rows will go. So each row will have one less block than the row before it, and it's all downhill from here, <laughs> so it gets faster and faster. I love the end of a corner-to-corner -corner, uh, blanket just because it does get just faster. It's just so satisfying to get back down to that corner and fasten off and weave in all your ends. And you should have a little bit left over to join your um, rectangles. Um, and I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, the first step when joining two or more of these rectangles is really to decide how you want to line the rectangles up. Do you want to line them up so that their long edges are together here, like to make one long baby blanket here uh, with kind of this V on the long edge? Or do you want to align them with their short ends together like this, maybe to make a wrap, which is what I'm going to do. <laughs> So I'm going to join the pink, dark pink corner to the dark pink corner, the light pink corner, and light pink corner. And I noticed that these must have been different dye lots because the grays really are, are different, but the pinks are pretty close. <laughs> so I'm going to join the, the two pink edges here. And you can join these two rectangles however you want, any kind of crochet seam that you want to do. I personally like to do the mattress stitch. So for the mattress stitch, you will need a regular yarn needle and just a little bit of yarn left over from one of these rectangles and maybe a pair of scissors. So first you'll need a piece of yarn that's about twice as long as the seam that you're sewing and leave a leave a six inch tail to weave in there, go down the seam and back and then leave a six inch tail back there and that's how much yarn you'll need and you can cut off that length if you want. And I'll zoom in and thread the needle here. And show you how to get started. 
So the basic stitch with mattress stitch is you sew back and forth between the two pieces, always inserting your needle from the bottom of the work up to the top of the work. And then after you do a few stitches, you can really close it tight like a zipper and it's pretty much an invisible seam. That's why it's my go-to. If you prefer, you can slip stitch these together and maybe not even have to fasten off. Uh, these, the yarn is so slippery, my, <laughs> my table is so slippery. It's, it's um, kind of sliding around here, but. So I've got my yarn. I'm just gonna sew with a single length of yarn. Got a six inch tail here by the needle. And I'm gonna choose one of the corners here and just insert my needle from the bottom of the fabric up to the top. And I'm gonna pull it through until I have about six inches left here. Uh, to weave in later. And now I'm going to go up on the other side, corner stitch, insert the needle from the bottom to the top of the fabric. And I always tie a knot here in the end. I think it helps keep your seam secure. You know, um, if you want, you can not tie a knot here. Some people don't like any knots in their blankets. But I do like to tie a knot right at the beginning of the seam, just like that. And that kind of anchors it. And then we'll weave in this tail later. So now we're going to go back to this side, insert our needle from the back of the work up to the front. I just grabbed kind of the next stitch over there and pull that through. Now I'm going to go to the next stitch on the other side, insert my hook from the back of the work up to the front. Same thing over here, find the next stitch. Insert the needle from the back to the front. Pull through. Now go back over to this side. And I'm just grabbing like one loop of this stitch over here. Pull through. Now to this side. Find the next stitch there. So you're just going back and forth, going in every single stitch, inserting your needle from the back of that stitch to the front. And doing your best to keep things lined up as you move on here. Make sure you're not too far off kilter as far as these two matching up. So you want to match block for block. And if it helps you can um, pin these together they're kind of sliding around my coffee table I'm wishing I had clothes pinned them maybe a little bit but just keep working stitch by stitch inserting that hook from the back of the work up to the front alternating sides sometimes it's hard to tell like in this little area here you know, where to put your hook in. But just do your best to keep lining up the blocks here. So here's my first row of blocks, here's my second row of blocks, and they're still aligned. Let's see, I already went in that one, go through this one. I'll do a little bit more here. Um, and then every so often, I would like to straighten this seam out as I lay my finger along the seam. And then I just give that yarn a gentle tug. You don't want to pull too, too far because then this little area at the edge will start creeping in. So maybe every 10 stitches or so, just give it a gentle tug, holding that edge down, holding your finger over the seam like that. I'll go in even a little bit closer here and do a couple more to show you where I'm grabbing here on the seam. Just alternating sides. I can see that I already went into this stitch here, so I'm choosing the next stitch up. Pulling it through. Let's see, I already went into that stitch, so I'm gonna go into the next stitch up here, working from the back to the front. Now on this side, I see I already went into this stitch, so I'm gonna pick the next stitch here. Now on this side, I already went into that stitch, so I'm gonna go up to this one here. Go through one loop. Now 
out to this side. I'm just going to keep going all the way up here and tightening it down a bit after every few stitches to kind of close that seam like a zipper. And it really does disappear um, in the middle, especially if your yarn color that you're sewing with matches up. So it will be a little bit more visible down here at the light pink end, but I think it's still going to hide the seam really well. And this is going to just look like one big, beautiful piece of fabric. So thank you for joining me and I hope you love your project.